The American Bell X-5 revolutionized aircraft design and performance in the 1950s thanks to its unique capability to change the sweep of its wings during flight. However, the aircraft was not an original American idea, but was actually inspired by a Nazi prototype. The Bell X-5 was an upgraded version of the World War II-era German model Messerschmitt P-1101, which was taken from the Luftwaffe at the end of the conflict. The unfinished German aircraft could only change its wing sweep back prior to takeoff, while the Bell X-5 could do it mid-flight by a state-of-the-art automatic system. The aircraft was used by the United States Air Force to test the advantages that the wing sweep could generate in speed and maneuverability. The Bell X-5 flew during the Korean War as part of a joint effort between the U.S. Air Force and the precursor of NASA, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. And even though it demonstrated outstanding potential and paved the way for aircraft like the F-14 Tomcat, the MiG-23-27, and the Panavia Tornado, several fatal incidents put the project at risk. Messerschmitt P-1101 During the summer of 1944, the German Air Ministry issued a request for a new kind of fighter under the Emergency Fighter Competition. The objective was to develop a high-performance defensive fighter that could take charge against Allied bombers such as the American B-17 and B-25 bombers that wreaked havoc all over Germany. The program essentially halted production on German bombers and offensive aircraft. It also shifted the Luftwaffe strategy to a purely defensive role to prevent American and British bombers from attacking dozens of German cities occupied by civilians. One of the specifications included the use of a second-generation jet engine. The Messerschmitt aircraft manufacturer was immediately attracted to the project and started working on it in July of 1944. Dr. Waldemar Voigt, head of the company's design bureau, formed a team and penciled two initial designs. A third was pending approval by the Air Ministry. The P-1101 had a short and wide fuselage, a standard tricycle landing gear, deep fuselage for the engine, cockpit pressurization equipment, and mid-mounted wings with an inner sweep of 40 degrees and 26 outboard. The HES-011 jet engine mounted on the fuselage would be aspirated by two rounded intakes located in the cockpit, which featured a single seat under a three-piece bubble canopy. The high tail featured a V-shaped configuration and was mounted on a tapered boom that extended over and past the jet exhaust. By August of 1944, the compound sweep wing was abandoned and was replaced with the outer wing of the world's first jet fighter, the MA-262. Additionally, the main landing gear legs were also replaced by those of Germany's best fighter aircraft, the MABF-109K. To accelerate the development process, the P-1101 prototype was built alongside the wind tunnel. A later innovation by Dr. Voigt included a modification to the wings to adjust their sweep pre-flight at 30, 40, and 45 degrees. The final prototype and its testing data were submitted to the Air Ministry for evaluation in November of 1944. Months later, in February of 1945, the Air Ministry declared that the Focke-Wulf TA-183 had won the emergency fighter program, as the P-1101 still needed more work. However, the Luftwaffe was still interested in the prototype and its swept-wing design that could reach Mach 1 speeds. Further testing and development were carried out at a little-known Messerschmitt facility in Oberammergau, hidden in the Bavarian mountains of southern Germany. The prototype would be equipped for the first time with four 30mm MK-108 cannons, but then the war finished and the P-1101 remained incomplete. On April 29, 1945, American infantry units on patrol discovered the Oberammergau facility and took over all the aircraft stationed there. In June of 1945, a cooperative effort led by Dr. Voigt and Robert J. Woods of Bell Aircraft to complete the prototype was unsuccessful because the French refused to release documents that they had taken from the project. Still, the incomplete prototype was shipped to Bell Aircraft Works in Buffalo, New York for a deeper analysis. Bell saw potential in Dr. Voigt's swept wing design and wanted to perfect it. It was the beginning of the Bell X-5.
an upgraded American version. Dr. Voigt was very cooperative with Bell about the intentions, capabilities, and shortcomings of the P-1101. Bell's chief designer, Robert J. Woods, intended to install an Allison J-35 turbojet in the P-1101, but the aircraft arrived in such a bad condition that it was deemed damaged beyond repair. He then decided that a new aircraft had to be built from scratch, but with a significant upgrade. To do so, the P-1101 was entirely dismantled to analyze its components and then scrapped. When Woods presented his proposal to produce an American version of the P-1101 to the U.S. Air Force in 1948, it was initially rejected, as they didn't see any potential in it. However, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA, supported Bell's proposal, as they had been conducting independent wind tunnel research on variable sweep wings as far back as 1945. Bell's pitch also included the promise of an efficient American NATO low-cost tactical fighter. The U.S. Air Force was finally convinced and awarded Bell a contract for two aircraft. The upgraded version was named the Bell X-5. NASA's official X-5 fact sheet indicated that, unlike the original aircraft, Bell's design, quote, could change its sweep angle in flight rather than being set on the ground before takeoff. Adding that NACA supported Bell's proposal and was a major reason why the Air Force approved the project on February 4, 1949. Development was more complex than expected, but the first mock-up was completed in December of 1949, and the first prototype was finished by June of 1951. The Bell X-5 was very similar to its German counterpart at plain sight. Like the P-1101, it featured a nose-mounted intake, bubble canopy, a modified boom-mounted tail, and an underslung engine. The wings could pivot from 20 to 60 degrees while flying. When describing its revolutionary mechanism, NASA stated that, quote, The X-5's wings were swept back, its center of gravity and center of pressure changed. To compensate, the entire wing assembly simultaneously moved forward on rails inside the fuselage. Sweeping the wings from a 20-degree angle to the full 60-degree angle required that they also be moved about 27 inches forward from their starting position. The change from 20 to 60 degrees required about 20 seconds. In the event of an electrical failure, the pilot could hand-crank the wings back into landing position. The X-5's power came from a single Allison J-35A-17 turbojet engine that gave over 4,900 pounds of thrust. Engineers expected a maximum speed between 680 and 720 miles per hour. Its service ceiling was 50,700 feet, and it weighed almost 10,000 pounds when fully loaded. No weapons were installed on this prototype. Testing the Bell X-5 The first Bell X-5 prototype had its maiden flight at Edwards Air Force Base on June 20, 1951. Bell's test pilot, Gene Ziegler, made the initial Phase 1 rounds to analyze the aircraft's basic capabilities. On July 27, the wing sweep mechanism was tested for the first time. Tests continued until October 1951. Feedback from the pilot stated that the X-5 was uncomfortable to fly, especially because of its violent stall-spin instability issues. It was believed that the problem lay in the position of the vertical tail fin itself. The aerodynamic qualities of the X-5 kept changing with every wing sweep, and there was no proper analysis of how the vertical stabilizers would react to different degrees. NACA test pilot Scott Crossfield said, quote, It was a terrible airplane in a spin. It took a long time to get that airplane out of a spin. He also noted that, quote, The X-5 was not a comfortable airplane to fly. It had a low-slung engine, so there was a misalignment of the drag axis, and the principal axis, and the thrust axis, and all that. So it could get into some interesting maneuvers and motions, and that sort of thing. After further testing, the first X-5 was turned over to NACA for some modifications. The second prototype was then delivered in January of 1952. NACA pilot Joe Walker went into an uncontrollable spin after activating the sweep wing feature on October 21st, 1952. Spinning commenced at 36,000 feet, and Walker required 18,000 to recover and stay out of harm's way. That was not the case with Air Force Major Raymond Popson. A year later, Major Popson entered a spin when the wings were at 60 degrees, 
but he was unable to recover in time. The crash destroyed the prototype, and Popson did not survive. The Air Force then decided to cancel the program. Legacy Even though the X-5 program was cancelled, Naka decided to continue testing the second prototype for additional research. Its last flight took place on October 25, 1955, with high-speed flight station pilot Neil A. Armstrong. The aircraft's spin was never fully eradicated, and during the checkout flight, a landing gear door separated. The aircraft was then officially grounded and sent to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in 1958, where it remains to this day. Despite the Bell X-5 stability problems, the sweep wing concept would later be incorporated into the Grumman F-14 Tomcat, the General Dynamics F-111, the Soviet MiGs-23 and 27, the British Tornado, and other Cold War-era aircraft. Its valuable experimental data would prove its true legacy. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our channels to find more content about legendary aircraft. And tell us in the comments below about other warplanes of your interest.